Hello, this is Alex with MasterChartsTrading.com and this is a market recap for Friday, August 15, 2015. This week, I think on Wednesday, stocks put in a reversal candlesticks and uh, for the rest of the week, I think we're rebounding. Uh, two of the sectors that are weighing on the NASDAQ 100 ETF are the biotech and the semiconductors and if they can get their act together, I think we can see new highs in QQQ. Small caps are bearing the brunt of the selling and are over, very oversold for this move. So I think the rebound is really close if maybe already have started. And then we'll look at bonds which are consolidating their gains after a pretty significant uh, move from, uh, from the lows. The dollar dropped this week and this uh, finally put a relief uh, on gold but so far not on oil. All right, let's look at the S&P 500 large cap index. Okay, so this week we had this really huge candlestick on Wednesday. And this, I think, is a, a hammer candlestick where prices opened uh, here, dropped precipitously throughout the day, and then rallied back up. We actually closed positive for the day on Wednesday. So this sort of is a um, important lesson of why I... Pretty much always look at the closing prices versus the intraday prices for making decisions of when to buy and when to sell. So uh, this, this to me, this was a, a clear case of doing just that. Um, if you panic during the day and you say, oh, my, my stops are triggered somewhere around uh, this level, uh, you would have sold. But uh, my stops are usually on close. So this... Uh, uh, that's exactly the kind of reason why I, I look at closing prices. So in any case, we uh, we had a hammer candlestick, and this is kind of a sign of a reversal. Next day, we just kind of we went sideways. But on Friday, I think this is a um, a good-looking uh, bullish candle, and we're pushing higher from the uh, retest of this level of 2052. This is a major support, and so far, I don't think it has been broken. We did break a minor support uh, here and here, but um, major support is still intact and the uh, uptrend as well remains. You can see the 200-day moving average is pointing up and uh, the 50-day moving average is above the 200. So for now, I'm keeping a bullish bias and, um, you know, if we move uh, from here, if we move higher, I think uh, we could easily take out this highs as well, uh, the all-time highs. You can see that on uh, advanced decline line actually improved its look. You can see a series of lower lows, uh, higher lows rather, in the advanced decline line. So that's a positive sign. I think this is showing a broader and broader participation. Uh, and if we break out, that that will be a very positive sign as well. Uh, the volume is still lagging, but um, again, uh, we'll see if that uh, actually means anything. Okay, next we'll look at QQQ, a power shares NASDAQ 100 ETF. Uh, this one, of course, broke out in uh, mid-July with a surge above this resistance at 110, 111 area, and then fell back to the 110 area to retest the breakout. This retest occurred one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times. So we're actually affirming that this a breakout level and very similar, well, somewhat similar pattern to the S&P 500. On Wednesday, uh, the price came down pretty hard and then rallied throughout the day. Uh, by the close, it rallied and actually closed positive. So once again, uh, closing prices are very important and I think even more important than intraday prices. Um, as far as uh, advanced decline line, similar picture, we're making series of higher lows, so that's a positive sign. And uh, let me see, on balance volume, see on balance volume the, is still kind of trading, uh, you know, trending lower, so ideally we, we should see a higher volume advance, but so far I'm not seeing it. But in any case, uh, the price is the most important thing in volume and the uh, market breadth indicators are distant seconds, I would say. So for now, the breakout is holding. I think uh, if we rally from here, new highs are likely again. So two of the groups I wanted to point out that are uh, pretty major parts of the QQQ, NASDAQ 100 ETF for the semiconductors, 
and the biotech. So this, let's look at semiconductors first. So semiconductors got really hit hard. This is about, I think, 18% decline or something like this. Uh, so it's pretty significant drop. And also this XSD semiconductor ETF is a uh, very broad uh, semiconductor, broad ETF. In other words, not a single stock dominates. So this sell-off was broad and um, steep. Now, um, we came down to the 78 area here, and then I think here we held support. So this selling tails out of the bottom of the candlesticks, you can see here there was a bunch of them. This indicates that prices were uh, are being rejected at uh, lower levels, and the buyers are stepping in and uh, are purchasing at this level. So we had a buy signal right here. Uh, in the 28th of August, I think. So we still we have a position open in uh, XSD, um, and uh, so I think you know once again it's firm in here, and I think um, unless we completely collapse, I think we may see a rebound at the very least to the 83 area, uh, 84 and possibly higher. Now there is resistance here from the uh, these lows here from August, uh, from April and May, or rather from April. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, next, let's look at the XBI, the um, biotech ETF. Once again, also a very broad ETF, and not a, not a single stock dominates. And uh, large cap names like Amgen, Celgen, they are just mere mortals in this ETF. So again, this is also a very steep sell-off. This is about I think 15% uh, drop. But, but this is a biotech, and we should look in larger perspective. This is a very volatile ETF, and it came uh, quite a run up here. So um, broken support here, definitely, in this area, uh, from this uh, lows at 241, 240, uh, 241, 242 area. But I think um, we're firming here in, in the 230, with, again, with the selling, uh, with the buying tails out of the bottom of the candlesticks. Now this Friday's candlestick is not doesn't really you know inspire me that much because general market actually gained on Friday while the biotech lost so um, not not a great looking candle but it could be considered a, a hammer candlestick as well so. Uh, I did have a buy signal right here, and I opened the position, um, and my uh, stop is, uh, I think it's around here in 220 area, unclosed. So if we break that, I think I'll need to uh, reevaluate and look for a re-entry opportunity. At this point, I'm still holding the position open. I think we're, uh, if the general market rallies, I think... Um, XBI will continue, uh, will rally with it. The reason, I think, is why XBI came down this hard is because uh, this is an almost an equal weight ETF, so um, uh, this ETF is weighted towards um, small cap more than um, its counter tr its uh, big uh, uh, large cap brethren IBB. So if uh, small caps rally, and I'll next uh, next chart I'll show small caps, I think uh, XBI will uh, certainly benefit. So let's look at small caps, IWM. Um, so IWM chart from the highest here to the lows this is about over 8% decline. And this is a uh, one of the major um, ETFs and, uh, that are watched um, by the market participants. So this one uh, much weaker than the S&P 500 and the QQQ. Of course, you can see that the first support was clearly broken uh, right here. and uh, the ETF came back up, and then uh, again, uh, the, this uh, resistance now, which support, which turned resistance, is now reaffirmed. So we f we fell back to the second support, and I think this is a major support here. But you can see lots of uh, buying tails uh, on this candlesticks again. So there is quite a bit of buying interest uh, in the 180 and 120 area here, and I think this support from um, from May lows is still holding. So, if we, uh, if the general market rallies from here, I think s and uh, rather IWM will uh, follow suit as well. Excuse me. Now, okay, so, once again, um, one thing that we sh I should, I wanted to point out for um, 
IWM is that it is extremely oversold. Since this is a, a bullish security, we're looking for oversold conditions within a, a bigger uptrend. And this is a uptrending security, so I'm looking for uh, oversold conditions. So on multiple indicators, for example, MACD right here, you can see it's very deeply oversold in the negative territory. This breadth momentum oscillator as well, very deeply oversold. And what's interesting is that we got a breadth momentum oscillator uh, signal just this Friday. So um, you can see right here on Friday we had a crossover. Now, uh, in the past we had, you know, of course, many of the signals, but uh, the last, out of the last uh, three, we had two that worked out really well and one that worked out uh, not at all. So we'll see if this one uh, works out or not. Okay, next, uh, quickly let's look at the bonds, uh, TLT, 20 plus years or 20 plus year treasury bond fund. So from the lows in June to the high here that was just put in, um, this is about over 10% rise. So for bonds, that's pretty pretty strong move. Again, here uh, I mentioned several uh, months ago that uh, bonds were at critical support, and if they break the support, I would consider bonds to be in a bear market. It clearly didn't happen, and uh, on the third attempt, uh, to break the support, it didn't happen, and we rallied pretty hard into pretty much non-stop until uh, Wednesday. And interesting, uh, you can see that Wednesday was a good day for stocks and bad bad day for bonds. So this is almost like a bearish engulfing pattern right here, uh, with a, a small white candlestick being completely engulfed by this uh, big red candlestick, and then we had a follow through on uh, next day. So. Uh, this actually could be a bearish engulfing, and we could correct um, possibly to this 121 area. There's some support here, so kind of difficult to put, and uh, maybe as low as um, 120 and a half area here. Um, anyway, so uh, you can see that MACD is already in over uh, you know positive territory, and looks like it's about to roll back down. So. The momentum has certainly been uh, lost on the upside. But having said that, you can see that stock charts technical rank is now almost at 90. So this shows that bonds are now uh, one of the market leaders. And when bonds are market leaders, this means that um, money is moving out of stocks and into bonds. And when money is moving out of stocks, the stocks are you know becoming uh, under pressure. So um, we'll see where this goes. Uh, okay, let me see the unbalanced volume. Yeah, there's no no um, uh, divergence in unbalanced volume, so we're pretty much uh, on track. Okay, next the dollar. So the dollar uh, took a breather this week from uh, gains, and actually I think it may have broken this minor support from uh, these two lows in July by closing below them and then below the 50-day moving average as well. And then uh, th Thursday and Friday we rebounded a little bit. But, um, you know, generally speaking, the dollar is an uptrend. You can see the, you can barely see here, the 200-day moving average steeply pointing upwards, the 50-day moving average is above the 200. So this is a very much a bullish security. Uh, so, and this pattern here could be like a cup and handle. Uh, so if this is indeed a cup with handle and price comes back up and breaks out, this whole thing should be duplicated in the upside. So we could easily challenge the highs from um, March and April, and uh, so it go to 100. If th if this happens, uh, we could see uh, prices of uh, various commodities come under further pressure. And uh, gold, of course, is a commodity. And let's look at gold next. So gold uh, daily chart. Um, this is a spot price gold. So um, you could see that here in. July, we put in a multi-year low, uh, intraday low at 1072 and 30 cents. Um, after this really steep sell-off that broke several supports. Now, this is a counter-trend bounce. Uh, gold is a bearish security. You can see it's quite 
clearly. You know, prices are moving from the upper left to the lower right. The 200 day is above the 50 day. There is mm, several uh, support breaks. But this snapback rally that started here in, uh, I think it's August 10th, uh, this is a bear market rally. Um, in other words, the security is in a bear market, but we are rallying, uh, rallying back up uh, to relieve the pressure um, of various indicators. You can see the MACD was extremely oversold, and then now we're uh, moving back up. So uh, once MACD becomes positive again, I will be looking for shorting opportunities yet again. Uh, for now, I think if you're if you're a bear like me, you know, simply just stay out of the market. If you're a bull, then maybe that's a buying opportunity. Uh, if you're a perma bull in gold, then always a good time to buy gold. I I'm not a perma bull or perma bear for that matter in anything. So I'm looking at price charts objectively. Anyways, for this particular rebound, I think if we don't collapse from here completely, uh, we could easily uh, see prices in the 1140 area, possibly higher, maybe even 11, 1170 area. And once again, if that happens, I will be looking for shorting opportunities again. Uh, next is GDX, Gold Miners ETF. Uh, pretty much followed suit with gold, but double that. So this is about 20% rise. And if you are lucky enough to buy it here at the all-time closing low uh, and then sell it right there, that's a 20% gain. Uh, pretty difficult to do, clearly, but the signs were there that we're putting in a bottom. And I showed this um, bullish percent index, which shows how many stocks within this uh, ETF, GDX, are on the point and figure buy signal. And there are there were zero stocks, zero percent stocks on the point and figure buy signal uh, here in uh, late July, early August. So I mentioned repeatedly that um, I think this is a, at the very least, a, a place where um, GDX could rebound and uh, relieve pressure on these various indicators. This has indeed happened, and excuse me. And you can see that there is now um, on balance volume kind of steeply moved higher with uh, also the um, uh, bullish percent index also moving higher as well. So same thing, uh, we could easily see, unless we completely collapse here together with gold, uh, we could see prices uh, maybe around $16.50, $17.50 dollar area from this broken, broken uh, support. At 1729 should now, should now act as resistance, so that's another. It's a logical place to look for shorts once they get there. So I'll be looking for shorts once the rebound has run its course. <clears throat> and um, since dollar is dropping, now you would think that oil should uh, also rebound because it's also a commodity, but no such thing. Actually, this Friday we saw an all-time closing low in closing low in USO and this sharp move down really keeps just keeps going of course you can see the MACD is not uh, no longer pointing steeply down and it's also in a pretty oversold territory so similar thing as with gold I think uh, a snapback rally could uh, materialize but it's very tricky to time this look for example this snapback rally if you bought right here, it, 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 it will, that, that would have been a failure. So, <clears throat> snapback rallies in, in um, or bear market rallies are, are notoriously difficult to time. So, but having said that, I think that we're kind of getting there, and you know, it's very oversold. So we're overdue for a bounce in oil. Okay, so next thing, uh, quickly show you how to find us on the internet. Please go to mastercharttrading.com. We do have um, trading trade alert services that I'm hoping to start within uh, the next two months. So um, I'm hoping uh, October 1st for a, um, a launch date. So please sign up for our mailing list and you will get a um, offer once we're live to get um, a discounted membership for uh, the trade alert services. Uh, we also have a blog, video section and a public chart 
public charts page and on this page and this page you can see a link here to the public charts page and here is where I post the charts that you see in this video. Also if you have Twitter, Facebook, YouTube or StackTwix, StackTwix accounts please uh, follow us there as well. That's it for this week's recap. Uh, thanks for watching and have another great trading week. Bye-bye.